Go. Many events contributed to the westward expansion and America's dream of manifest destiny. The California Gold Rush, however, was probably the most attracting event in American history. It brought hundreds of thousands of people over to California over one precious element that would make them rich, gold. This is the Gold Rush by Katia, Kat, Jack, and Taylor. Of course, the Gold Rush didn't just happen. There was some history behind it. Before the Gold Rush, California was owned by Mexico. California's population was not very large. It consisted mainly of Native Americans and Californios. With Mexico owning California, they feared American immigration and were not going to let any people in. However, in 1839, a Swiss immigrant named John Sutter was an exception. Sutter was granted 50,000 acres of Sacramento Valley from the Mexican governor. The land was still not very populated, even after Sutter's land grant. Later in 1848, Sutter sent a man named James Marshall to build a sawmill in the American River. When Marshall inspected the water, his eyes caught a glimpse of gold. The news was everywhere. Gold in California. Many people started moving in. By 1849, hundreds of thousands of people had moved to California, seeking fortune, including Americans, Europeans, and of course, the Chinese. Not everybody came to California, though. Most miners were young men with very few women. A woman living there, named Lucena Wilson, said that in the time of six months, she only saw two other women there. Of all the miners, one of the biggest groups made up two-thirds of the population at the time were the 49ers. The 49ers, who were Americans, came to California first in 1849. In case you haven't already noticed, the fact that they came in 1849, obviously, is how they got their name. Even though the 49ers were the first ones to California, ironically, many did not get rich. Very few were lucky. Most would lose their money to gamblers and con artists <laughs> who would swindle their money. Another big group who were practically the opposite of the 49ers were the Chinese. The Chinese started coming in late 1851. And by 1852, one out of every ten miners was Chinese. The Chinese were the most patient, skilled miners. Most Chinese were poor peasants who experienced failure of producing enough crops and hoped to score some gold for better lives. However, many Chinese were hated and resented by the Americans. <clears throat> The Chinese were always so patient with finding gold, and their customs were so different from the Americans. This caused jealousy and suspicion towards the Chinese. Even though the Chinese were different, many had the same conditions of living. Miners had very poor conditions at camp. They lived in tents despite any weather conditions. Miners had poor malnutritional food, Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I'm hating hatin it. And many suffered from diseases and exhaustion. Many deaths also occurred from whippings, <laughs> accidental deaths, <laughs> and hangings. Even though all the violence and cruelty, the gold rush left quite a legacy. The population growth in California had made quite an impact. It caused great economic growth, with San Francisco becoming the center of banking, manufacturing, shopping, and trade. In 1850, its population had allowed it for statehood. The gold rush in California statehood also contributed to America's dream. to America's growth and manifest destiny. Therefore, the gold rush was way more important than people think. If James Marshall didn't spot that little piece of gold, California wouldn't be a state. And if California didn't become a state, we wouldn't have it as part of our country. If we didn't have the state, we wouldn't have California's awesome beaches or Disneyland or the mine.
monumental Golden Gate Bridge. So the next time when you visit California or go walking along those beaches, just remember, without the gold rush, you won't be standing there on this great land of ours. Woo!